Grocery prices are on the rise as inflation grips the nation. The United States is already experiencing very high inflation on food. The United Nations worst case scenario calculation is that food prices globally will rise by an additional 8.5 percent by 2027. Part of those higher costs is due to more expensive fertilizers. Prices of some fertilizers have increased by 300 percent since 2020. So last year it was around $270 per ton and now it's over $1,400 per ton. It, it's scary. It, it turns my stomach a little bit to think about the uh, amount of risk that our family farm is taking right now. Energy prices go up, fertilizer prices go up, food prices go up. Farmers are being forced to pass those costs along to customers. We're going to see what actions we can take to increase fertilizer supplies globally. We would only be able to feed about half of the global population without fertilizer. So it's essential, it's necessary. At the same time, creating enough fertilizer has a tremendous cost on the environment. As world demand for the most used synthetic fertilizers has surged, stocks in the fertilizer space have soared. Grass sure seems to be greener for fertilizer stocks and investors lately. Here's why the world is faced with a fertilizer crisis, both the shortage of it and its use. Commercial synthetic fertilizers are commonly used, but they're becoming way more expensive. And farmers typically spend nearly 18% of their budget on chemicals, fertilizers, and seeds. You know, if we can't sell our, our crop for what we've put into it, obviously that would be very devastating. And for most farms, you can't go more than one season that way. Last year, we paid about $600 a ton for our, our fertilizer for the fields. This year, it's up to about 1,000, so nearly doubled. Without fertilizer, crops may not get as much nourishment as they need. That can cause yields to dip. You cannot grow industrialized crops without fertilizer. You need seed, you need water, which is a climate issue, and you need fertilizer to get the yields that we in a developed country are used to to all our food needs. The three main nutrients that plants need to get through fertilizer are nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. There are certain crops that use much less fertilizer than others. Legumes, soybeans, chickpeas, peas, the entire category of food does not need to use synthetic nitrogen for fertilizer. They can eat the nitrogen that's in the air. When the USDA surveyed farmers about what they intended to plant in spring 2022, farmers responded with plans to grow a lot less corn. Instead, farmers expected to plant a record 91 million acres of soybeans. Fertilizer costs can also cause higher grocery prices. Increases in fertilizer prices are going to mean that corn at the store is more expensive. I don't know the exact percentage, but fertilizer prices definitely are a huge input cost for food. The food price index increased 10.9% year over year as of July 2022. And July marked the seventh straight month that food at home rose at least 1%. And it's not just fruits and vegetables seeing inflated prices. It's the next layer of products after that, the animals that eat all of those products. So even though there are products that farmers can grow that don't use the fertilizer, think about what people want to eat what they want to eat, you know? Manufacturing nitrogen fertilizers uses the Haberbosch process. It takes nitrogen and combines it with hydrogen in a chemical process that takes a lot of heat and energy. And that heat and energy comes from primarily natural gas. The Haberbosch process was invented by German scientists in the early 1900s. But chemical fertilizer production began at a large scale after World War II. Henry used a new phosphate fertilizer developed by the chemists from... The plants manufacturing nitrogen for explosives started producing that nitrogen for fertilizers instead after the war. Thereby increasing the yield of such staple crops as potatoes, beans, tomatoes, and corn. Flash forward, in the U.S. still produces a significant amount of nitrogen and phosphorus. Fertilizer firms have consolidated over the last 25 years from 46 to 13. In 2019, only four companies made up 75% of both production and sale of nitrogen fertilizer in the U.S. CF Industries, Nutrien, Coke, and Yara USA. 
and two, nutrient and mosaic, supply a lot of potassium-based fertilizers, also called potash, to North America. The U.S. also imports a lot of potash, but many other countries depend on Russia and Belarus for potash. Together, they provided roughly 40% of the world's potash exports. For example, a country like Brazil gets 85% of its fertilizer from Russia and Belarus. Now, they are running out of fertilizer. Russia doesn't just export potash. Russia and Ukraine together export 28% of fertilizers made from nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It's amazing how dependent the world is on fertilizers from Russia and Ukraine. Then Russia's exports were hit by sanctions following its invasion of Ukraine. That disrupted shipments, sending prices skyrocketing. More fertilizer is finally on the way to the U.S. from Russia, and that couldn't be more important amid fears of food shortages. And natural gas costs have surged, ultimately raising prices for fertilizers too. So there's a d direct relationship with what we're seeing in fuel prices and fertilizer prices. Will we actually be able to procure the inputs that we need next year? And part of that is supply chain coming out of the pandemic. Part of it is, you know, different parts of the world where fertilizer comes from. The scariest thing is availability. Overusing fertilizers can contribute to nutrient pollution, which the EPA says is one of America's most widespread, costly, and challenging environmental problems. For example, overusing nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizers can result in runoff reaching waterways like streams and oceans, causing algae blooms. Those blooms can contaminate drinking water, resulting in illnesses for humans and animals, and also cause dead zones. Then there's the soil itself. Scientists are advocating for better soil management that could reduce needs for fertilizer. Propped up yields with chemical fertilizers, which works for a while, but isn't as powerful as enriching the soil with organic matter that will hold it in place and enrich it in, in many different aspects, not just the availability of the nutrients and fertilizer. I'm not saying that the fertilizer is bad. No, I mean, our soil naturally has nutrients in some places more than in others. But if you are in a soil that is naturally depleted, then you need to find a way to make those nutrients available. And the farmer's going to show me what passes for gold these days. This is it, the fertilizer. Right? For example, Sri Lanka tried to push farmers to go all organic, banning the use of fertilizers. Should be this tall. And now it's this tall. Since the country has faced massive economic turmoil due to a number of reasons and has ousted its leader, the new acting president has promised to purchase fertilizer for the next planting season amid fears of food shortages. So we really need to find the ways to make it possible for farmers to make the move toward these sustainable practices, practices that are not perhaps as lucrative for them in the short term, but long run, these practices will be great for farmers. It will sustain their, their soil over uh, you know, decades. But in the short term, it costs money to make the, diff make, make the change. So we need to compensate farmers for the cost of making those changes to sustainable practices. The United Nations estimated fertilizers were responsible for about 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent greenhouse gases in 2019 the latest data available. That was equal to about 2% of total annual global emissions that same year. The way to help the American farmer is to make sure that we have a place to sell our crop. And we have such a huge role we could be playing on really shifting the needle and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Some entrepreneurs are working to make the fossil fuel intensive processes more sustainable. Examples would be to use carbon capture to remove the carbon from the air after it's been released in the uh, traditional process or to power the Haber-Bosch process with renewable energy, such as wind and solar. There is a company called Join Bio, which is trying to engineer a microbe that would be able to fixate nitrogen, bring the nitrogen in from the air on cereal crops, so your wheat and your corn and your, and your rice, in the same way that legumes are able to, with about half 
the amount of nitrogen fertilizer. That would be a game changer for the industry. The U.S. has announced a new global fertilizer challenge to raise money to develop alternatives to fertilizers. Let's aim to raise at least $100 million toward increasing fertilizer efficiency and developing alternatives by COP27. In March, the U.S. also announced it would give farmers support to combat the rising fertilizer costs, including $250 million through a new USDA grant program to support domestic sustainable fertilizer production. 2023 is when the next Farm Bill will be passed. And so this is a real opportunity to encourage legislators to get language into the bill that will encourage farmers to grow cover crops, to increase soil carbon, to use intercropping and all the practices uh, that we know of like no-till that will build the soil. I'm hopeful. It's actually a very exciting time to be in agriculture. It's a risky time. I don't want to downplay that. And we're such a big part of the supply chain that we've seen empty grocery shelves. You know, for the first time, our generation has experienced that. We feel like we can play a role in, in trying to mitigate that from happening. Ukraine just started exporting grains and other agricultural products again. However, until the Russia-Ukraine war ends, the USDA said fertilizer prices will likely stay expensive. But there really is no way around using fertilizer. It's, it's a matter of using fertilizer more efficiently, using it more accurately at the right time in the right quantities at the right place. 